Our scripture this morning comes from several uh, verses in Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Follow along as I read them. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as the living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And then verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. <clears throat> Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, and keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. And then verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let's pray. Our Father, how we thank you for your word, how it pierces our hearts and speaks to us and reassures us and at the same time challenges us to live godly lives. We pray that as Joe speaks with us, to us this morning that we might have hearts to listen and hearts to obey what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Beverly and Pastor Phil. You all have given us the message already. Welcome to you on Zoom. It's wonderful to be one family meeting together in different places all over the world. God is with us as we've worshiped and as we now look into God's word. Transforming love, love that transforms. God's love transforms us, and then we can share that love with others, and that same love can go on and transform other people. Accept God's love and be transformed by it, and then you will be able to have that overflow of love coming out of you and sharing with other people. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What is God's will? Well, God's will is many things, specifically to each of us, but overall, God's will for you and me is that we love each other. That is our mission. God has called us to a mission, and that's what our assignment is. Back in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's why we need our minds transformed. We are humans. God made us to be the way we are. And God knows that we don't have the capacity that he does, knowing everything. So it's a process. 
For me, it's a process for you. Hopefully, we are each becoming more like Jesus as we are transformed. Now, the world wants to distract us from our mission. The enemy is after us all the time, trying to get away from this simple task of love, our mission to love. The world is trying to draw us away. How does that happen? Well, many things. The enemy attacks us in ways that are useful for us. So it's different for each of us, but for some people, the world, the enemy tempts us with power or comfort or the enemy may put obstacles in our path that we allow to consume us and so that diverts our attention away from our mission of loving others. For some of us, <coughs> we seek the acceptance and approval of others, and we waste so much time and energy just trying to get approval from others. For others of us, what diverts us away from our mission is dreams of grandeur or becoming great. For others, it's self-indulgence <clears throat> or addiction. What distracts you from your mission? Circumstances, society, Hollywood, the enemy, and others want to make you dissatisfied with yourself. So many things draw us down. Unethical businesses will use shady marketing to say that you are not cool unless you buy this product. And that may divert us from loving people. We could put more energy into loving people if we weren't so consumed with trying to be cool with the latest products that someone has thought they could talk us into buying. Politicians will tell you lies to get your vote. Selfish friends will say, if you love me, you will do this. All of these things can divert us away from our mission. Governments will tell you that if you just trust them, they will take care of you. The devil will try to tell you that God is not loving and trustworthy. Cosmetic companies will tell you that they can make you beautiful. Drug companies will imply that they can guarantee your health. Dishonest car salesmen will try to sell you a car you can't afford and don't need. Our whole society is trying to draw us away from our mission. Our mission from Jesus is simple. Love others. Let God fill you with love and then love others. Your love can be like a refreshing drink of water to someone. Are you the kind of person that is refreshing to others? Does God's love flow through you and make others feel loved and accepted and respected? Now, we are a very diverse group, Waynesboro Mennonite Church. We have lots of different kinds of people. That is one of our strengths. That is one of the ways God has transformed us. We have the ability to love and accept people who are different. That's a beautiful gift from God. I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I am being 
transformed by the love of God. So there was a little boy in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in the 1960s that grew up in a conservative Mennonite church. The way that that church and that family and that group of people felt that they could share God's love best was to convince people that if they would do certain things, God would love them. If the ladies would wear a bonnet and a cape dress and the men would wear a priest collar suit, we called it a plain coat, if you didn't wear bright and flashy clothes or jewelry, if you didn't go fishing or play ball on Sundays, on and on was the list of ways that we were taught we should show God's love. Show God's love by helping people become godly, by leaving the worldly things. Well, that family was sent to Virginia to be missionaries among the heathen. Oh my, how different the people in Virginia were than Lancaster. How evil were they? They didn't wear bonnets, they didn't wear black clothes, and they fished on Sunday of all things. How terrible. They needed the love of Jesus. Over the years, through the Holy Spirit and through other Christians and through the process of the Holy Spirit speaking to me through others and through the Bible, I started to come to a realization that God's love worked a different way. Wow, God loved me just the way I was. God loves you just the way you are. We still need to be transformed. I am being transformed by giving up on some of those old ideas that we need to dress certain ways or have certain activities to earn God's love or to be good enough for God's love to be shared through us. But God can use you and I just the way we are. It's a process. Now, as much as I try to not be abrasive or not be condescending or judgmental, sometimes my old self sneaks through. And so I ask you this, if I do something that offends you, come to me and say, Joe, why did you do that? This is what I want to respond with. And if I don't answer this way, you say, ah, 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 you said you were going to answer this way. This is the way I want to answer. Please forgive me. I don't want to offend you. I don't want to be abrasive. I don't want to do things that hurt you. Tell me why that bothered you and help me understand so that I can show you love in the way that you appreciate and can receive that love. That's the way God is working on transforming me. I want to be the kind of person that people perceive as loving. And I encourage you to be transformed. That's how uh, one of the many ways, but that's one of the most important ways that I believe God wants to transform each of us. Take off our rough edges and make us be more loving and gracious and kind and gentle. I want to be a refreshing drink of water. Now, Caleb has agreed to help me with the next part of my sermon illustration.
2 Timothy 1.9 says, God has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Thank you, Caleb. As God transforms us, we become even more refreshing to those around us. The world is broken. There is division and strife. People say hurtful things. We have very many differing opinions about things. But God is calling us to be a refreshing, cool drink of water to each other. So what? All of my sermons have a so what section. What does it mean? So the devil is trying to keep us distracted by any means to keep us from accepting God's love and being renewed and getting about our mission. Accept God's love and be transformed. Be more like Jesus. What is the Jesus way anyway? What's Jesus' love like? Jesus' love is not selfish. I want to do what makes me feel good. I suspect you as well want to do things that make you feel good. Can you be renewed and regenerated so that you can make other people feel the love of Jesus? Now, Pastor Claire and some of his team are talking about a whole series of ways to show God's love to each other. One of those is the possibility of making vegetable soup together and eating and sharing it together. I think that is such a beautiful picture of who we are and what God's love means to us. So the idea is that each of us would maybe bring a quart of beans or some carrots or beef or onions or spices or salt or pepper, put it all together and cook it and eat it together and enjoy each other's company. I think that is a beautiful picture of who we are. Are you a carrot? Um, Am I an onion? Some people don't like onions. How are you going to tolerate that onion in that? I have a dear friend who is a vegetarian, and she doesn't condemn me when I eat meat, but she tolerates me. She puts up with me. Can we tolerate each other? Can we be the love of Jesus to each other, even though we have different opinions about things, different convictions. We are Jesus' hands and feet, sent by God to love each other and to love the world. When the devil picks on you and accuses you and tries to get you down, because that's what the enemy does, just know that God loves you, and we love you, and we are here for each other. Can you hear Jesus saying 
to you through the love of this church. I love you. You are special to me. Yes, you are different. I made you this way. You are not a mistake or an accident or a hopeless case. Yes, I made you who you are. I know all about the painful experiences you've had. I love you anyway, and I'm grooming you to do great things for me. I have special work for you. I am calling you to work for me by showing kindness to others. Let's look forward with joy and expectation to how God is going to work to continue to make us his family of love, spreading hope and peace to our neighbors. Let's pray. Thanks, God, for embracing us and for letting us be part of your embrace to others. For those who need healing, touch them. For those who need encouragement, embrace them with your love. Mend the brokenhearted, bind up the wounded, lift up the weak, call the lost, lead the confused, fill our hearts with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and mercy. Forgive us of our sins. Help us live in victory through the power of your sweet Holy Spirit. Lord, give me your eyes for everything I keep missing. Give me your arms for the brokenhearted, and give me your heart to reach out to others in love. In Jesus' name, amen.